So first of all, huge congratulations. What went through your mind when you learned you were the guy tapped to go to the space station? Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, this is, it was such an amazing moment uh, to hear the news. Uh, for me, it meant a couple of things. First, it was a bit of disbelief initially. After all these years of hard work, finally I was going to get my chance uh, to train for a space mission. And then immediately that was followed by a very humbling feeling that, wow, there's a lot of work uh, lying ahead of me in order to be ready and to you know, prove my worth. Uh, to, to get the certifications necessary to actually blast off the Earth uh, to the space station. Let's talk a little bit about that work. So you head out November 2018, and this is Canada's third long-duration mission, six months. What kind of preparation is involved in ensuring that you're ready, not just physically, but I think many of us would wonder mentally? You're right, yes. Yeah, so there's many, many aspects to the preparation. A lot of it is technical, of course. We've got to learn how the spacecrafts function. I've got to go a part of, big part of my training in the years ahead now is going to be in Moscow learning how to operate the Soyuz rocket. But then there's a lot of experiments you have to get to know how to use, having to learn how to use the spacesuit, robotic arm, Canada's contribution to the space program. All these I have basic uh, training in, and now I'm going to just need to get more advanced practical training specifically for the mission that lies ahead of me. And finally, I'm going to have to practice Learn, train on how to do the experiments that I will be conducting while on board the orbiting laboratory. What about mentally? I know you're married, two children. Six months is a very long time to be anywhere, and uh, a phone call isn't as easy when you're uh, that far away. So how do you prepare for that, you and your family? I wonder what they're saying to you as well. You put your finger on maybe the biggest challenge as far as we're concerned, uh, myself, uh, my wife, and, and our children. We're very enthusiastic about this, but very well aware of the challenges that lie ahead uh, as this adventure unfolds. And you know, a lot of people realize what it must mean for the, to be six months away from your family while you are on board a space station. But you gotta think, there's also the two years leading to the space mission. Two years of constant travel around the world, the training in various uh, space agencies. So that in and of itself, is a huge challenge and that's that's at our doorstep so we've uh, we're getting ready we're preparing we, we got a good plan <laughs> have you thought about how you will reach out not just to your family but uh, to the rest of Canada as we will be watching you uh, you know the guy before you uh, Chris Hadfield became a bit of a rock star uh, even uh, playing his guitar up there and and tweeting uh, do you plan to use social media and any instruments in mind for you You're right, so I was Chris's biggest fan myself. Uh, it was amazing how Chris managed to bring us all on board the space station, make us experience the daily life up there. And for me, the biggest take home message from the huge success uh, of his outreach efforts was that it's okay to be yourself while you're up there and present your experience from your own personal perspective. And that's what I intend to do. I intend to bring as many Canadians on board as I can from my perspective just being myself and sharing my experience uh, in my own way. I was reading a little bit about how you decided to first apply to be an astronaut. You were working as a medical doctor at the time and your colleagues said, hey, you should apply. If, talk to me if you could a little bit about what went through your mind. I gather you described it almost like falling in love. Exactly, that's exactly how it felt like. Uh, so. Space flight to me had always been a fantasy throughout my life since childhood, since the first time I understood what those images of the Earth seen from space really mean, how hard it is to make those pictures that someone has to be not on Earth in order to take them. Ever since I understood that as a child, I've been motivated by space flight. It's been kind of a fantasy, never really believing I could do it, uh, never really believing it was possible, but always thinking, well, this for me is like the ultimate goal to be physically, mentally, intellectually, academically fit and prepared to be the best you can to be an explorer, basically. That's what it meant. So it's motivated me throughout my life to stay fit, learn languages, go to university, become a bit of a scientist and an explorer. It was, it was a great guide for me. And then I was already in my mid-30s when I heard that they were recruiting astronauts. That's uh, that moment we refer to. And 
It's as if a light bulb went on in my mind and I could hear the voice of a small kid in my head, that was me when I was like five or six, telling me, David, you gotta try, you really have to try. So I decided I would put my name in, application, took over a year, all the selection process, the testing and all that, and uh, lo and behold, uh, got lucky and got selected seven years ago to join the Canadian Space Program, and I moved to Houston, Texas to start astronaut school. And uh, finally, after seven years out there, uh, here comes uh, my turn to uh, prepare for a mission. Well, we're so happy for you that that kid in you saw his dream come true. A huge congratulations again on being tapped for that mission to the space station. We look forward to following the journey along with you and speaking again in the future. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Jennifer. It's a real privilege to represent all Canadians on that great mission. That's Canadian astronaut David Saint-Jacques joining us from Ottawa.